we're gonna take a look at how we can use code to actually interact with the keyboard. I'm gonna take a look really quick first at the actual um, model class we're working to represent the data in this, because again, we're always talking about looking how we can use data within our project and send information back and forth with it. And so in this case, I have a debug duck and it has a position right here of 400 and 400 for its X and Y values. And I have a single public method update position where it takes a direction and a distance. And if the direction is horizontal, my um, X position is modified by that distance. If it's not horizontal, my Y position is modified by that distance. So I can use that to quickly identify the data attached to those uh, two local data members. I also have my two string method where I'm using a description to define things. As you can see, I'm using HTML on this so it can support multi-line inside my GUI. I have HTML tags surrounding the text I'm working with and that allows me to have a uh, little more interaction on the GUI side of this because of the text right here is just simply a string and I can have it displayed with multiple lines inside my GUI and I just extract that data. I'm going to go over to my controller, which is the model view controller approach I've been working with. And as you can see right here, I have a debug duck that I'm working with inside here. I have my keyboard frame window where I create um, first my model first and then my uh, view inside my constructor. My start method doesn't do anything and that's okay. My update duck info method takes a direction and int as a parameter. And if the direction is up or down, then I say it vertical in the amount. If it's not up or down, that's obviously horizontal. So I send the horizontal in that amount. And then I have my um, in between method, my get duck info, which retrieves the information from the duck because the duck has no idea that there's a view at all. And so I simply say demo.toString, assign that to the duck details, and return that back so it can be sent to the view and used appropriately. We're not going to look at our frame at all because that doesn't do anything for us today. Let's take a look at the panel itself. And as always, we're going to start off at the very top of the class with the import section because the import really is where we're going to be doing all the work with this. So I'm using a Java uh, Swing Library, I mean JPanel, Keystroke, Spring Layout, Abstract Action, and JLabel. Those are pretty self-explanatory except for the um, Abstract Action, which we'll talk about again in just a second. I have javax.imageio.imageio so I can actually work with a picture awg.graphics, event.actionEvent, .input event, .key event, .key listener, the awg image buffered image so I can load the picture in the screen. I have to deal with an exception because I'm loading that picture straight from my file, so I have that there. And then a hash set to have the data that I'm working with at the time. Inside my uh, class, I have a keyboard panel that extends JPanel. I have my controller, a label, the buffered image I'm drawing that picture with, the spring layout to handle just laying things out on the screen that I normally do in class, and then my X and Y position stored as a private int, and then a hash set of type integer key so I can store the key presses as I'm working with them. So in my constructor, as you can see, I'm doing my quick initialization of what I'm working with right here. And so I have my this.app as app layout as a new spring layout. I have the details attached to the label on that so it has a default value to start. My default position is 400, 400 matching where I put that in from the demo of the model itself. And then I have my keys as a brand new hash set of type integer with nothing inside it. I'm doing just a really quick try catch with nothing inside the catch statement for that because I know it's already gonna work where I load the image from the resources structure. It's just a quick way to do that with imageio.read passing at getclass.getresource and the path where that file is found. I know it's gonna work so I don't worry about that. And then I have my setup panel, setup listeners, and setup layout helper methods I have in all my projects. Now I'm not gonna go into setup layout at all but let's take a look at setup panel so I load those things in. As you can see right here, I have this.set layout passing it the layout, this.add duck info to put the label in there. And then this is the key thing we're talking about working with the keyboard. If you're working with key listeners, you have to make sure that you are focused on there. And so this.set focus will pass it true. So that makes the panel, the active thing we're working with, listenable. So it's like, oh, I'm paying attention to this. So this is kind of a big deal when you're working with listeners. If you're working with key binding, like I said on the other video, you don't have to deal with that at all. But if you're working with um, listeners, you definitely need that. And as you can see, it's just one line. Cake, no big deal. So we have that movement method, which just simply just goes through and handles the multiple presses. So it iterates over the key set right here. So for every integer key inside keys, if it's um, up, it's gonna go up. If it's left, right, or down, no big deal for that. It simply just goes through those. That's just collapse that out of the way. We have our move duck method, which is gonna say, oh, I'm gonna set my amount to be five. And if I'm going up or left, because those are represented by going negative on the number line, we we're talking about Java GUI, I assign the uh, value to be negative five, and I uh, add that to the y or x value associatively. If it's not going to be um, up or left, it's gonna be down or right, which means I'm gonna go bigger, so I just simply just add the amount to that right there. As you can see right here, I'm doing a little bit of bounds checking, so it keeps it within bounds of uh, negative 20 right here, negative um, less than 800 on that. So it can keep it from going outside the bounds of visually, so I can see even if I keep pressing left, it'll record the data going to the actual model itself, but it's not gonna have it go off the screen so I can't find it. That way I know it's actually there, and you'll see that recorded in the actual model label that we're showing on the screen. So pink that's how I draw the picture on the screen. And all I have to do to draw a component is for, it's an overridden method from the actual panel. I call super.paint component first, which draws the basics, cool. Then I say, hey graphics, draw this image. What image? The duck image, the one that I loaded up in the constructor. Where do I wanna draw it? I wanna draw it at the X and Y position that I've uh, assigned to that value, which gets handled, of course, inside that movement 
where I do that stuff right there. So that's where I handle that move duck right here. And the move duck makes that Y pause and X pause go up and down, just like we saw a minute ago. So that's where we have that happening right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the listeners. That's where the work actually happens for this. So the first one we have is if we're working with the idea of a keyboard listener. And so with a keyboard listener, again, like I said in the lecture, the key type has nothing attached to it. So it's just simply an empty method. We don't have any work with that at all. So it's just gone and out of the way. When I'm working with the key press though, I'm gonna say, hey keys, I wanna add that key code to the actual set. So if I press the up, the down, the left, right, whichever key I'm adding, I add that to the set and then I call the movement method for that key. And then when keys are released, when I release a key, oh, I remove that key from the set so it stops processing that key event. So I can keep on handling the multiple events happening over time so it'll keep processing that right there. And that's all I have to do to do a key listener. When I want to do the bindings though, that other style right here, I have, you can see right here, my bindings linked inside setup listeners like I've been doing, where I have the this.getInputMap, which grabs the input for this associated device, and I then put a keystroke in there, which one I'm looking at this, that is K, or excuse me, in this case I'm working with H, J, Shift, K, and then Command, Zero. And so I attach those keystrokes right there, and I put that into the input map with an associated key right here of move left. I then take that associated key, that, uh, the value that was from that, that's now the key for the associated action map, and I link the action to the, the instance of the class I'm talking about. And that's where those anonymous classes that we were talking about just a minute ago, and so we'll scroll down there and take a look at those. As you can see, I have my private classes that I'm working with right here. They're really, really simple classes. I'm just going to pull up the um, left and left down actions because they're really uh, similar right there. And so left action right there just has a public void action performed, pass an action event E, and then I'm going to move duck left. Oh, so if I do the left action, I'm going to go left. If it's a left down, I'm going to go left, then I'm going to go down. And so it just takes that associated action perform method that's linked inside this action. I create it and I link it to the upright key right here as an action map. So I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to do when I press the associated key with this. So I'm mapping the key to that value. And so again, when I go ahead and go back to my app right here. So here we have right here my keyboard demo. You can see that I have my details value right here. And I have my H key. If I press my H key, oh, I'm moving to the left. So the H key is linked to move left, which calls the left action, which goes down here to the associated left. If I want to use the zero and the MetaMask key, I do command zero and I go up and right. Oh great, my numbers match appropriately. And then if I keep on going up and right, you'll see that when I get past the point of five, of 800, I will continue to go, uh, my value will update past that point. So I'm going um, past 800 and my Y value is going negative, but my actual value of my image does not. So if when I come back down, if I go over here and I move down my structure, hey, look, I come, and I've now my, my data values have changed appropriately inside my model, which is where this is coming from, even though it's visually right here. And so I have that happening right there. And so I can use my up and down arrow keys as well. I can use my ASDW keys like this, which I'm working with the idea of the key map right there. And so whichever key I'm pressing, it does the appropriate thing based on either the movement method, where it's the W up, left, A, S, right, Z, uh, down, or I'm using the associated bindings right here with H, J, Shift, K, or the mask approach where I can have a masked value on that, and that makes it so it works as well. I hope this is helpful. Hope you're able to do some cool things with this and use some great applications. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.